Hey y'all, Rachel here. I had recorded the next segment for my part two prior to me getting to go thrifting this week. So I wanted to let you know, stay tuned to the very end and you'll get to see the great stuff that I found picking. It'll be in my shop and on my site for you guys. As well as next Saturday, April 9th from nine to five, Miss Brandy Fan from the Gypsy Soul Market is putting on her second annual craft event. It is at the Greene County Fairgrounds from nine to five. Make sure you bring all of your little kids and grandkids because we're having an egg hunt as well. And if you go to each vendor, we'll also have eggs. There's going to be 10 eggs with $10 in the eggs so that you guys can come and spend it at the Gypsy Soul Marketplace. Anyhow, I can't wait to meet you guys. So make sure you come on down. There's up to 75 vendors, rain or shine. I'd love to have you. See you soon. Hey y'all, I'm Rachel, owner and artist at Stella Rose Boutique here in Greenville, Tennessee. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for me and mash the notification bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. This is part two to a large thrift haul from a couple of Sundays ago in Westchester, Ohio. I have a lot to get through, so we're getting right down to it. When I was a kid, I remember going out to brunch with my parents, especially Mother's Day brunch, and that's why I bought this. This is a craft that I remember always orange juice being served in it when I was a kid. This one's also a craft, but it was more of like a uh, vase size. So, and it's got a little bit of texture here, but I thought I could paint this and do something with it and it'd be great for flowers. This, I have no idea what it is, what it was originally created for other than just decor. It's got amazing texture all the way through it, top and bottom, and a little finial thing on top, but it opens. The bottom has no maker's mark. It just says that it's 2001 YY and the number seven circled and made in China. A metal container. It could be hung on a door. It's got this heavy loop. Again, no maker's mark or anything on that, but it's got neat texture here. It had floral or some kind at some point in time because it's got that uh, floral foam stuck on the inside of it. I have another vase here. I think this is made out of a resin material, but look at all the texture, all the different things. That'll be really neat painted up. A hook to hang purses, keys, coats, whatever at your door, but I thought that was really neat. Cheap little tin. Let's see what we can do with this to make it look like some high-end decor. MDF, it's a vase. Look back on my last video if you haven't watched it. It's got all of my rules that I go by when I purchase MDF stuff. I'll link it below in case you haven't seen it. This, look at that. Does this look familiar? I did a bowl just like this not too long ago. See, here it is in the picture. I'll link this video to that, or link this in the in the description box too below on that video. I'm gonna do something else to this one and I'm sure it'll turn out cool. I had an idea to, I've got a bigger vase in my other room and my idea is to drop the smaller vase in it and line between the two vases, rows of peeps and different uh, Easter candies to put on the kids table at Easter. But <clears throat> when I dropped it in there, I can't get my hand down in there to put the peeps in because this lip is on there. So I need something straight to go to drop into it. I'll find it. I bought this one. I don't like the actual vase and, and the container, but these are great for decor and, and putting it in displays and setting stuff up. So this is like $15 at Walmart for a package of these. And this thing was three bucks. So that's why I purchased it. I'm sure I can figure out something to do with this. And it's got a metal container or a metal bottom and little feet on it, but I don't like this. Although I may keep it and repurpose it for something else. We've got this here. It's a book. It feels like leather and it looks like leather, but I don't think it is. And I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do to it, but it opens up. 
So I thought that was really cool. And it's got a little magnet to keep the door, the, the drawer top on it shut. Here's a picture frame. I figured we could paint this up and have it look really neat. But when it's got some type of texture on it, see if I, or some type of a waxy thing and that comes off on it. So I may have to do like the cement texture on it to get that to stick because it's got that coating on it and we'll figure it out. This here, I'm not gonna do anything with it. I really like this copper bowl just as it is and maybe put like the decor that I, the little, um, these things, I don't know what they're called, decorative balls in it or something like that, decorative fruit, whatever. It'd be great on the table, but I'm gonna keep that just as is and I'll put that up on my website. Here's a basket. It's huge. I'm gonna paint it. It's got some damage to it, like where the finish has come off on it, but there's no actual structural type damage to it. And I got a whole bunch of baskets. I probably won't do anything right now with the baskets, but I'll trickle that throughout videos. There's this one. This one I'll use in the fall. A trivet. This is really cool, an old vintage trivet. And these, we used to use these as kids. There's a whole bunch of them in here. We used to put paper plates in them and it was like, it kept them sturdy while we were eating on it. So like when you go to pick up the paper plate as a kid and food doesn't all fall in together and off your plate. I know some people use these for decor in walls on like a basket wall and we could do that too. But I think I'm gonna keep these because we eat off paper plates, especially a lot by the pool in the backyard in the summertime. And this. I see these baskets all the time, but not with a little handle on it. And it was in really good shape. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I'll figure it out. And then this one too, same one, great shape. Doesn't have the handle, but it's an oval one and not round. And I liked it. So that's all that's in this thrift haul. And I'm gonna do some of the stuff this time, but if I don't get the stuff all done, we'll put it in other videos and trickle it down. So come on with me and let's see what I get done. This let's is go. a sign from part one that said, I don't give a shiplap. Look how easy this paint is to blend y'all. I love it. So this is Queen Bee and I lightened it up with some beadboard. And then I went in with my JRV playful background stencil and put some honeycombs in some various spots, just wherever I felt like it. And then I got out my stamps from IOD and my thin mount board, which I give one away free with every stamp order. I use the letterpress stamp for the words and the B from the queen bee stamp. I, you see me here adjusting the stamp masks on the board and that's so that when I go to stamp right here, the words behind it or the words on top of it, it looks like it was done first behind it and it doesn't stamp over the words that I put the masks on. So then I gave it a coat of Big Top because I didn't know where its next life was going to be. And I wanted the flat look though, so I wanted to cover it with the clear wax after I put that um, Big Top on it. And then I highlighted it with some gold gilding wax with the honeycombs. I then got the craft out and I gave it a coat of DIY's Marquee. It's a beautiful deep red. And then I decided I was gonna stamp it. I put it between two towels so it wouldn't roll. I'm not very good at stamping on a rounded surface. And I put the stamp, which is a crockery stamp from IOD, over the top of the actual texture, hoping it would give it some an embossed look like it was supposed to be there. And then I did it while the paint was still open, meaning that I had not sealed it with Big Top first. I think I like stamping over the top of a sealed surface. It gives it a more crisp look. Then I coated it in DIY's clear wax, buffed it out, and I was all done. I then got out this cute little hook and used my beadboard white and my Klingon R14 brush which is super simple to clean. Put it in a cup of water and the paint literally falls off of it, y'all. And these round brushes are perfect for getting in all the little nooks and crannies of any project you need to. I then gave it a coat of clear wax because I wanted to go in with the black wax and I wanted it just to sit in the low spots. 
and once I put the black wax on, then I went and got my Better Than Cheesecloth buffing rags from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, and I wiped back the high spots so that the black wax only sat in the low spots. It still needed something, so I got out my Golden Rule Gilding Wax from DIY and touched just the high spots, and that's exactly what it needed. This next project is the market day basket that hangs on your door. I make salt wash in my, to my custom blush colored pink that I had, and I mixed it also into the sage that I had. I also lightened up those colors with vintage linen to give it a more softer look. Um, I used my old JRV brushes. I use them sometimes for wax, and I use them for things like this to get the texture on. Um, I did some research to find out what other colors are like French country colors other than just the blue to get that look. And it had a lot of soft pastels. This is why I came up with the green and the pink. I really like the way the two of them look blended together. Once I got the whole bucket done, I then covered it in top coat, but it was the Sweet Pickens top coat because it's super, super flat, and I wanted to keep that flat look of the paint as much as I could. And then I dried it with my heat gun, and I was all done. This was a super simple and easy makeover, y'all. I then decided I was gonna do that green bucket. I got out my heirloom roses and my bird song mold and then the mold from a couple of Christmases ago that had the trees on it. I can't recall the name though offhand. And I used the roses stem as a branch and the leaves and then the birds from the bird song and the acorn from that Christmas mold. Uh, the first package of clay um, I had gotten too dried out in my bag and it was crumbling. So I opened another package and learned my lesson to make sure all the air is out of the bag. Anyhow, I then used my leftover paint from the previous project and added the pink texture to the background and added texture to the colors that I put on the birds. I'm not really good with detail painting. I actually stink at it. So um, that's why I wanted to give it some more appeal with the texture and I coated in Sweet Pickens top coat for that flat look. I then knew I needed to add a texture to this to hide the little chips and um, marks that had come off of this piece of resin. So I used the gravel road and I added salt wash to it. You can also add baking soda to add texture. It sat for a couple of days because I didn't know what else I wanted to do to it. And so I decided to play and I watered down old school 10 to one because this paint is so heavily pigmented, I wouldn't lose its color. And then I added that dark, of old school just to the back side, so it made it look like the design was standing out further. And I really liked that. And then I clear waxed it. And then after I clear waxed it, I thought I would use the white wax and I would still get to see that the dark behind it and then the white on top. And I lost it um, when I white waxed it. I wiped it back, but I still lost that dark old school color. I then got out the MDF face, wiped it down, and noticed it had a nicotine smell to it. So I covered it in DIY Salvation Solution because I was originally going to paint it a light color until Debbie had a live with us about paint mixing. I am in love with this color. This is a combination of Hey Sailor and Monet's Garden. I'm gonna do a video here coming up soon with paint mixing. All the new colors that we can create with the paint we already have. I am just in love with this color. Isn't it beautiful? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And what should I call this color? Anyhow, I decided then to give it a coat of the flat top coat from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And then I decided I was gonna use some transfers on it. I can never say this word right. It's the label Inferia. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. It is retired and I do have a few of them left. So if you're interested, hop on my website. This has all kinds of different labels in different sizes, shapes, and fonts. It's really cool. And then I decided to take out the lemons transfer and I added lemons to it in various locations. Then I sealed it up with Sweet Pickens top coat over the top of it to seal in all the transfers. All of the paint and products and projects used in today's video can be found in my shop and online at stellarosboutique.co or 524 Justice Drive in Greenville, Tennessee. 
If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and tell me in the comments what your favorite part was. Also, share it with your friends and family and anybody that you think that would enjoy it because that helps me grow my small business. And as soon as I get 750 subscribers, we're going to have another giveaway. This is the amazing stuff I got picking and it's not even all of it. Authentically vintage watering cans, brick molds, corbels, cheese and sugar molds, and I've got the containers in there for the sugar molds. Look at these vintage soda water sprayers. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. I also have some metal tins, troughs. I've got table runners, some kitchen towels, so much stuff. It'll all be on my website and in my shop for y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.